Oh. It's We're going. <laughs> Uh, happy Merry Post Christmas <laughs> and Happy New Year. Happy New Eve. Year's. Happy New Year's Eve. <laughs> <clears throat> We're still recouping from last week's travels. Yeah, quite a bit actually. We're both pretty tired. Um, but uh, we've we, also had a sick yeah, both, little one that's kept us up a little bit <laughs> at night. Yeah, so. so we're we're a little tired tonight. Uh, hopefully, New Year's happens uh, earlier than. Uh, normal. We're probably going to watch on Eastern time yeah. so that we're done at 10. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to trick our, our children ever. Um, and the older ones, they'll never uh, accept that it's actually that time, but we uh, maybe the younger one. Probably not. Probably <laughs> <clears throat> well, I uh, would like to welcome everybody out tonight. We, um, in, in our planning, we forgot that tonight was uh, New Year's Eve for our doing our ranch to uh, from the rancher's mouth <clears throat> but regardless we'll keep it short and sweet there were a few things we wanted to kind of talk about tonight um i'll start with uh tomorrow we're <clears throat> excuse me tomorrow we're taking our goat and lamb uh to be processed so in about a couple of weeks we'll have goat and lamb back um how are we going to be in stock if you're interested in buying um, a whole or a half goat or lamb, you can email us. Otherwise, it'll be available just um, by the cut at retail. So. <clears throat> so one of the things that I always run into or always ran into before we started producing our own meat was um, I always wanted to try different things, <clears throat> but there was never, you either had to buy a whole animal or uh, you just couldn't couldn't find it. I would encourage anyone to try uh, our goat or our lamb. Um, <clears throat> lots excuse of, me. Lots of people who have said they didn't like one or the other tried it and and actually liked it. Yeah, we. Um, yeah, so goats or uh, lamb, like mm -hmm. lamb steaks or chops or whatever. I really like them on an open flame or like a charcoal grill. That smokier uh, charcoal flavor is really yummy but mm -hmm. uh, goat is probably my favorite to eat if I was just gonna eat something all the time it would be goat <clears throat> so it's like a cross between uh, beef and pork and it's an ornery little critter called goats <laughs> so um, anyways uh, so tomorrow that's going in a couple of weeks we'll have that available whole half or uh, by the cut and then uh, I'll let you do this next one. <clears throat> oh, just um, our 2020 season of production is already starting. Um, we got our first set of pigs uh, on Sunday, actually. So yeah. just have had them a few days. If you follow Instagram or Facebook here, you would see a picture. But um, So that's already started. Those ones will probably be ready um, by May. Yeah, and, they definitely should be. Um, and our chicken production, we've already got all of our plans put together for chicken. And so pre-orders will begin in March. So the nice thing about pre-orders is you're guaranteed to get chicken. <laughs> yeah, once once we start processing, our birds move pretty darn quick. Um, we can sell out of a hundred batch pretty... Pretty easy. Within a, a week. Um so it's just something if you want some or you want to try some sooner you order or pre-order the the greater chance of you getting some and i really haven't found anyone that's uh, disliked our chicken um they uh i don't know i guess the number one thing that probably both of us here is uh that's how chicken's supposed to taste yeah and um, that's what everybody <clears throat> says it tastes like grandma's chicken so um just a children knocking um, with that, so if you're, you need to be on the email list, that's the best place to get the first, um, information on that. Um, that'll be, we'll be sending that out and details on how you can pre-order a lot of, um, the customers that do buy the chicken. A lot of reasons why it goes so quickly is because people like to stock up because we only produce it seasonally, um, May through, um, I think our last processing date is going to be in October. So what we produce is what we produce when it's gone is when it's gone. So 
that's why people like to stock up and fill their freezer um, for the winter. Um, so that's another reason why you want to pre-order. And you can pre-order out of the batches. It doesn't have to yeah, be Yeah, you don't have to batch. get it at a time. Yeah, you can. You want uh, 10 birds out of the last batch, and, and that still works just fine. Mm -hmm. or, or five birds <clears> from <throat> each batch, or, or however that works. Yeah. So, yeah. We have pumpkin pie in the house. And our youngest Mary, she wanted, <laughs> she wanted pumpkin pie, yeah. and nobody would listen to her. So Dad yeah. made sure she got yeah, some. Yeah, Dad made sure she got some. Um, so, okay, so that basically takes care of most of what we wanted to talk about tonight. We're really excited for this next year. Uh, we've talked about it a few times. Um, we have some prices that we've raised a little bit on some things. <clears throat> we. Um, Part, partly because grain prices are a little bit higher for what we're doing and this year we when we've added in all of the overhead and everything we're we're just trying to stay to um, well what most farmers and ranchers run into is that they they run themselves into um, where they might be able to sell the animal but they're not actually bringing any money back in uh, to to uh, replenish that well or to to keep things moving. So, what is the statistic uh, by two years? Um, yeah, less than it 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 was it's okay like it's five. Right. It was like five percent make it to two years, but less than one percent of new farmers make it to five years of it, operation. A, but a lot mo of, sorry. most of them don't make it past. Um, two years. Yeah, most most new farmers don't make it past two years, and a lot of that has to do with not understanding pricing, not understanding how to recoup, um, bring back, just bring back the money back in. Well, that's because most people <clears throat> who get into agriculture do it because they love agriculture, but yeah, you, you have forget to, that. <laughs> you have to know business too, and and just most a lot of people don't want to learn that or 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 are just in over their heads right off the bat, and and yeah. I think both of us basically were as far as I mean we had business experience, but we're still there's a still lot still a lot to learn. <laughs> there's a lot to learn. Uh, I just remember Carissa where we used to live, constantly asking people who had been doing it for a long time, what do you do? How do you keep track of everything? Pricing, yada. And every person had something to different or to say or nothing to say at all. Um, and uh, one of the things that's funny about agriculture is that you have extreme. Uh, I mean, you have you have extremes on both sides, and you r have everybody in the middle. And the people on either side don't see eye to eye, and they won't work together. And then you have the people that are closer to the center who may not really agree with each other, but they work with each other. So. Uh, we do stuff a little bit different, so not everybody jumps on the, hey, let's help them out. We approach agriculture from a different standpoint um, because we want to see other people like us uh, step into that and, and make a profitable living, something that their family has as a lifestyle for generations <clears throat> and where um, actual cost of production is accounted for. Um, it, it, you know, it's... We, you struggle as a producer because you want um, you just want everybody to have what you produce because you know it's a good product period and that was something when we initially when we when we first started talking about it we um, before we really uh, bought any animals did anything we we initially said we want to do this just to serve our our family, our extended family, so that we can we can have everybody can have really good food and not have to pay an arm and a leg for it. Um, yeah, and that was a big motivator for uh, for us doing what we're doing. So, so when we look at uh, the economy of scale or uh, cost association with with what we're doing, or um, <clears throat> There's probably not really any way to recoup every dollar or every hour um, uh, prices for for products would just be astronomical. I I saw a thing today on a beekeeping forum, and uh, the, the guy worked 650 uh, seven hours for a season, and his uh, dollar per hour basically was three dollars and thirty three cents 
uh, an hour for for labor so um not a not a living wage at all and he he was just basically pointing out that we have to be realistic when we approach certain things and so when you have when you have 20,000 animals um it takes you a certain amount of time to to take care of those animals every day regardless uh, past a certain point regardless of how many there are um so like like for us whether we had one pig or 24 pigs we still spend the same amount of time taking care of them because their needs really don't change feed water and then during the growing season we have feed water and, and rotate pasture or it doesn't really change much the amount I mean we could add another 50 pigs to it and it would take the same amount of time um, so the the hope is that at some point we we increase our, our production so that our labor or our overhead costs go down so right now our, our, our overhead costs are stretched uh, across a, a few animals versus what we're trying to build to where we have um, those few an where we have a few more animals and, and it lowers our production costs and anyways the idea of being able to offer that that product um, and, and have a, a greater range that we're able to serve. Um, I don't know if with, I anything. <laughs> <laughs> with that, you know, and so um, part of this goes into a lot of people question, um, you know, why buying directly from a farmer or a rancher is more expensive yeah. than going to the store. I have on our website, I actually have a blog post I did, I think maybe like a year and a half ago, but it kind of went through that. Um, and for our chicken, for example, and the actual cost for the chicken, including labor and time and things like that, ended up, um, but it was still missing like utilities, like what the cost of electricity and water and all those things yeah. were. Um, but true cost to raise a, the chicken was, you know, around $30 for a chicken just to raise it that's the cost and then if you want to be a profitable farmer you know to be able to continue the lifestyle you have to earn some kind of a living wage and so that wasn't even really including that so um just to give you an idea so when you the idea was people co um, were complaining uh on a facebook group about the cost of um, products at the farmers market and what's not realized is is the difference that it takes for a smaller producer to to raise versus a large producer and along with that we also talk a little bit about subsidies um, there are there are grants and um, government um, reduce rate loans uh, extended loans there are all sorts of things that larger operations have access to that smaller operations do not. If for no other reason than they have an army of uh, lawyers for, for some of the uh, uh, larger people or have people just dedicated to, to searching those things out. And, and so what you run into uh, when, you, when you start something is, one, uh, the amount of time to go through all the paperwork to try and find access to any of that mm -hmm. stuff. It's basically insurmountable for a couple of people who are day in, day out, just grinding it out. And and not just that, like, this conversation can go yeah, it's... so many ways and very deep, <laughs> so many ways. Um, you, When you start touching on subsidies and loans and things that a lot of these larger operations have, you know, then comes the conversation of debt. Then comes the conversation of these larger farmers and ranchers are making like, I think what it is right now is eight or nine cents on per dollar. Um, yeah. Then then you start into the conversation of these farmers and ranchers actually are not making any money, which means paying their loans and things like that is stressful, um, which gets into the conversation of um, mental health, mental health, and uh, career-wise, farmers have the highest suicide rate because of the financial crisis 
that's kind of surrounding um, these larger producers a, a day that, to day, yeah, a day that to day to are dependent day to day. on um, the subsidies. So our goal, um, along with there's quite a few other farmers and ranchers that are successful at it, yeah. that, that they make a great product, they're able to sell it, um, it is more expensive than the store, but I think you guys all can agree yeah, that it's, it's quite a bit different um, compared to store products as far as value and quality. Um, but this, that's part of what we want to show others as well is that it can be done. You can make a living. You can live in a comfortable home. You don't have to be poor <laughs> to be a farmer or a rancher. Well, and, and, and you can provide a great product at a at a reasonable price. Yeah. To... Sorry, I didn't mean to. No, you're fine. <laughs> we so it's interesting. I I I um I guess it would be my nephew in law. Uh, ben and I were having a conversation the other day about how many farmers there actually are in the United States, uh, farmers and ranchers. <clears throat> and currently, we sit between two and 2.6 million uh, people that are associated directly with the production side of, of, of produce or, or animal uh, for consumption. Um, so I think, I think the United States is at 330 or 340 million people. So, so 1.3 or a little bit less percent of the population is generating the food uh, for the rest of the population, it, and as it is, we don't have enough producers in our own country to keep a consistent supply uh, for demand. And and so, I'm by no means any uh, an expert in in regards to some of these things. Um, we take on import export. We we import so much product into the country. Now we are not only, uh, we are tapped out as far as what we have for producers, but now we are tapping other countries uh, and their producers and bringing their goods here instead of producing what we can here because there isn't anything in the United States <clears throat> that uh, we, we, there isn't anything we really can't raise. Um, I, I can't. I, I don't know of any crop or animal that we wouldn't be able to raise here. And instead of doing that, we we've reached out across the world, and now we've we've entered so many different topics and conversations. But but the point is, is that we don't have replacement generation to replace those who are currently in agriculture, and and if we don't want to be more dependent on a global structure. Uh, and that we we want to be more de independent um, we have to build a system uh, like we did a, we had a hundred years ago where where our children can see that that they can make a profit they can have a good life they're they're not going to live in poverty because that's the perception is don't become a farmer you're just you're a dunce if you if you uh, engage that uh, that that work field and so and it'll always be a struggle. Yeah. So along with that, and, and I don't know how much more we have to say, we probably went past the, the short and sweet part, but um, so I, I shared it a, a little while ago. I just finished reading this book a, a few weeks ago. <clears throat> the author is Shannon Brooks. He is the, I guess, the president of mm -hmm. the Monticello College. And what I really appreciate about this book is that it has directly... <laughs> It, it d deals directly with what uh, what we are doing in regards to we're trying to show children or, or people in rural areas that you don't have to, to sell the farm to, to stay viable and to stay um, in a place where you can be productive. Um, he, he talks quite a bit about rural, rural, cal rural, uh, living and, and urban living and the conflict just created there because there are producers and there are, are consumers and um, so the book is not a right or left um, it's a uh, what uh, what is considered a uh, the American culture and, and he talks about how that came under attack and, and really it was it was agriculture 
or rural living that came under attack. And um, from the first time I met Carissa to now, um, her coaching, her her desire to help people or to uh, help people see that th their value and and their um, <clears throat> their worth and help them heal. And uh, so from that and and my desire to to help people heal, we knew one that it started with food, but but the other thing that we always wanted to do was create a place where people could come, have cabin, cabinets, uh, not cabinets, little, little tiny cabinets, <laughs> cabinet, see I can't even say it now, uh, where people can come and stay, where they can find solace, they can find peace, where they can heal, and start down that path with, with uh, nutritious uh, food and a nutritious life balance. And, and that's really what's motivated Carissa and I for a really long time is, is to create these atmospheres wherever we go so that people can come, they can gain that peace and understanding, and that they can, they can take that extra energy that they've gained. Um, they, they have this awesome food and they have this just, you know, they become centered again. And then they're able to uh, move forward with their life. We've run into so many people who, who stopped developing, you know, at 13 years old or you know as at adole a adolescence and uh, it's a goal of ours and a hope of ours that the the more you become consumers and customers uh, the more you become friends the desire to to see what else we have to offer as as uh, just individuals who are looking to to build community um, so with that if you have anything else or not um, just next in, in our Facebook group, The Well-Fed Life, that is attached to our Wavoka Ranch Facebook page. Uh, the Well-Fed Life, next week I'm doing a class, and it is not another New Year's class. <laughs> but we, um, I'll just be taking you through um, some exercises and things for a mindset shift. So that... Um, the reason why it's not another New Year's class is because it's not about creating New Year's resolutions where you have a goal and then you try and change your behaviors. It goes deeper than that. And so it sets you up for success whether it's every week or every year or this year or, you know, years from down down the road. Anyway, so if you want to join that class, it's January 9th. Um, I haven't put a time on it yet, so be watching um, for that, it will be recorded live um, in the group, The Well-Fed Life. So, that's it. Oh, and I'm just going to put a plug out there. We're looking for... Uh... Yes, do it. <laughs> Wait, she doesn't even know what I'm going to say. Yes, she I read do. my mind. Uh, we are looking for uh, more pasture to lease. Uh, we're looking for land to, to get on. Um, we have a couple that we're on, or a few that we're on right now. And uh, we're just looking forward to 2020. If, uh, if things go as planned, we'll have our home remodeled and uh, potentially put it up for sale. We are looking to buy within the valley. We'd like to stay in the Montrose Delta uh, area. Um, so if you know of anything or know of anyone that's looking to vacate or any of all of the above, Shoot us a message or call us. Uh, we'd love to to talk. Um, we're we're working pretty hard to find a a central location that's able to to handle all of our animal uh, needs. Uh, Versus being spread out. Yeah. <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. Uh, that's my my little circle that I do every day to check on everybody. So um, it would be a great blessing. So if you know anything, please pass it along. Yep. Appreciate it. And have a happy new year. Yeah, happy new year, guys. We'll not only see you next year, but next decade. <laughs> new year jokes are my favorite, and he hates them. <laughs> I don't I don't hate them. I just know what they are. So, yes. so we'll All see right. you next decade. And, and thank you guys so thank much you. for everything. Have a good evening. Be safe tonight.